in the diagram BK bisects the angle ABC. So that means that this angle and this angle are the same. If I call this angle Y, then this angle here is also Y. We want to prove that the length of BA times the length of BC equals BK times BP. So if we multiply BA by BC, we will get the same answer if we multiply BK by BP. To prove this result, we're going to look at the triangle BAP and the triangle BKC. We're going to prove that both of these triangles are similar. That means the angles are the same. And from that, we can prove that the corresponding sides are in the same ratio or proportion. The reason we look at these two triangles is that these two triangles involve the quantities that we're interested in. We have the length BA, which belongs to this triangle. We have the length BC, which belongs to the purple triangle. We have the length BK, which belongs to this purple triangle. And we have the length BP, which belongs to the blue triangle. So by looking at these triangles, proving that they're similar, and getting the ratios of corresponding sides, we should end up proving this result. Now I'm going to use an important theorem which I prove in another video. If we take a circle and look at angles standing on the same arc, so let's take an arc of this circle. So here's an arc. And we consider angles that stand on this arc. So this is an angle that stands on it. Then this angle here will be equal to another angle that stands on this same arc. Okay, so this is the arc. Any angle that stands on it will be the same. So if I pick any point here and join it to the ends of this arc, I will have this angle here and these angles are all the same. So looking at this diagram here, we see that we have an arc from B to C and we have two angles that stand on it. This angle here, which I will call X, and this angle here, which also stands on it. So both of these angles are the same. So I can label them the same. So now we have that two angles in the blue and purple triangles are the same. Two angles are the same, then the third angle is automatically the same. I will call the third angle in both triangles angle Z. Now let's look at corresponding sides in both of these triangles. Let's start with the purple triangle and take the side that's opposite Z. Well, the side that's opposite Z in the purple triangle is BK. If we take BK and divide it by the corresponding side in the blue triangle, that's the side opposite Z in the blue triangle, which is this side here, BA. That ratio is the same for any other pair of corresponding sides in both similar triangles. Let's take the corresponding sides to angle X. Well, this side corresponds to this side here. So in the large triangle, in the purple triangle, we find that BC, well, this ratio is equal to BC divided by the its corresponding side in the small triangle, which is BP. Okay, so in the numerator, we have sides belonging to the large triangle. That, that was the purple triangle. And in the denominator, we have sides belonging to the small triangle. That was the blue triangle. Cross multiplying gives us our result. The indicated angles in the diagram are equal. So the two alphas here and the two betas. Prove that the line QS is a diameter of the circle. A theorem that we use to prove this result is the following. If we take a cyclic quadrilateral, now that's a, a four-sided figure that fits inside a circle. A quadrilateral is a four-sided figure. A cyclic one is one whose corners are points on a circle. Then it turns out that opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral sum to 180 degrees. 
So A and B are a pair of opposite angles, and the sum of them is 180 degrees. X and Y are a pair of opposite angles, and their sum is also 180 degrees. So we will use this theorem here, because PQRS is a cyclic quadrilateral. So the opposite angles in the cyclic quadrilateral PQRS sum to 180 degrees. So th these are a pair of opposite angles. This angle here is 2 alpha, and this angle here is 2 beta. So 2 alpha plus 2 beta equals 180 degrees. Dividing this equation by 2, we deduce that alpha plus beta equals 90 degrees. If we call this angle up here z, we know that tr three angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. Alpha plus beta plus z equals 180 degrees. Since we know that alpha plus beta is 90 degrees, we can replace alpha plus beta with 90. So 90 plus z equals 180, or z equals 100 minus 90, which is 90 degrees. And similarly down here, this triangle here is similar to this triangle. You know, two of the angles are the same. That means the third angle is automatically the same. So if this angle is Z, then this angle down here is also Z. And Z is 90 degrees. Another th theorem that we will need is a theorem about angles standing on the same arc. Now this is the arc in question. Now the angle at the centre that stands on the arc is here. C is the centre of the circle. So this line is a radius and this line is a radius. And this angle at the centre of the circle that stands on this arc is twice an angle at the circle, at one of the points on the circumference of the circle that stands on the same arc. So if this angle is 2x, then this angle here is x. So for example, if this angle here is 140 degrees, then this angle will be half of it, 70 degrees. I proved this result in another video. A very important deduction of this theorem occurs when the angle at the center is 180 degrees. That means that the angle at the circle is half of 180 degrees, which is 90 degrees. So if the arc is happens to be a semicircle and the angle at the center is 180 degrees, okay, so the the radii from the center to either end of the arc lie along a straight line, then this arc is this angle here is half this by the theorem, but half of 180 is 90 degrees. So in this case, we talk about the angle in a semicircle. Okay, so this angle here is now an angle in the semicircle because this is a diameter of the circle, cuts the circle in two. So we see that this angle of 90 degrees stands on this arc here, the arc from Q to S. and it's half the angle at the center that stands on this arc. So the angle at the center must be 180 degrees. That's 2 times 90 degrees. But if it's 180 degrees, then we must have a straight line joining the ends of the arc. And it's a straight line that goes through the center of the circle. So when you write this down, you could say that the angle at the circle standing on arc QS is 90 degrees. So QS is this arc here. And the angle at the circle standing on it is this angle here, which is 90 degrees. So by our theorem, the angle at the center, so if we join points Q and S to the center of the circle, we get the angle at the center, is twice 90 degrees, which is 180 degrees. But if the angle is 180 degrees, we must have a straight line joining the point Q to S, and the angle at the centre is got by joining Q to the centre of the circle and S to the centre of the circle. So we have a straight line that's passing through the centre of the circle. So that means the line QS is a diameter. The diagram shows a diameter D of a circle of centre A. So this line here is the diameter. This diameter line is produced to the circle C uh, to make AD equal to DC. So this distance here, AD, is equal to DC. The line BC is a tangent at the point B. We want to prove that angle BAC is 60 degrees. So BAC is an angle whose corner vertex is at A 
and it's formed by arms B, B A and A C. So the two arms are the lines B A and A C. So I'm going to prove that this angle in here is 60 degrees. We will use the following theorem to answer this question. If we take a tangent to a circle, a tangent is a line that touches the circle at one point only, then the tangent is perpendicular to the radius joining the center of the circle to the point of contact. So that's the theorem that we use. We will also use a small bit of trigonometry. Looking at triangle ABC, we see that the line AB is the radius of the circle. I'll just call it R. The line AD is a radius. It's a distance from the center of the circle to a point on the circle. And because we're given that AD equals DC, then DC is also has a length equal to the radius. BC is a tangent to the circle at B, so the line joining the center to the point of contact is at right angles to the tangent. So the triangle ABC is a right angle triangle whose hypotenuse is 2R and one of the short sides is R. So we have that the hypotenuse is twice as long as one of the short sides. So we have the ratio of two of the sides. So to bring trigonometry into this, we could look at either this angle here, which is what we're after actually. So we might as well look at this angle, but we could also look at this angle. So I'm going to call this angle here X. So this is the angle that we're after. We're trying to prove that X is 60 degrees. Then we could look at one of the trigonometric ratios for a right angle triangle. The side that's adjacent or next to X is R. It's not this side. This is actually the hypotenuse. So we need to get, bring in the sides that, uh, well, we need to bring in this side R and the hypotenuse. So we need to bring in the side adjacent to X and we need to bring in the hypotenuse. And that ratio is the cos of this angle. The cos of angle X is the side adjacent to angle X, which is R, divided by the hypotenuse. That's the longest side of the right angle triangle, the side that's opposite the right angle, which is 2R. And you see these R's cancel out, so we get cos of X equals a half. So we know the value of cos of X, which means that we can find angle X. So it doesn't actually matter what R is. All that matters is the ratio of the sides. If we know the ratio, we can find the angle. The inverse cos of a half is 60 degrees.